Welcome to the very first video chapter and lesson for Blender from the team here at BlenderTech.com. This is going to be an introduction on how 3D space and 3D modeling works for someone who's never used software like Blender before. We will be describing how 3D modeling and objects work with some examples and explain how to look at creating objects in 3D space from different shapes. Lastly, there are some tips and tricks randomly inserted throughout. Hope you don't miss them. I'm re-recording this video because the original was my very first upload and recorded with my laptop's mic, which picked up all sorts of terrible sounds, not to mention my voice sounded horrible and echoey and it was terrible. I am including mouse click effects in my video editor so you can see where and what on I'm clicking for this basic tutorial and introduction. If you've used 3ds Max, Maya, AutoCAD, SketchUp, anything to that effect, you can probably skip this video. However, I always make sure to include a couple tips that aren't completely or commonly known so that anybody will learn something by watching this and also it's just a great refresher video. If you're a great drawer as well and understand perspective and 3D shapes as well as shadows and shading, you're one step ahead of the game in learning Blender in its fullest. So we're going to start with a few things. Here in Blender this is our startup file. Currently factory settings. In videos to come we will be cleaning up the user interface which is called the UI to something more efficient and easy to use as well as changing the theme slightly so that our workflow is improved. Another video will be setting up the user options to customize it to your likings as well as common options that should be enabled for much easier modeling that even professional CGI artist miss. So let's get started with the basics of 3D space and 3D objects. We're going to scroll in and out with the mouse wheel and I'll get more into the mouse and keyboard use in Blender in a later video because it is extremely complicated. I'm an avid flight simulator fan and they have less hotkeys simulating every function imaginable in a modern jet fighter than Blender does have hotkeys. Luckily recent versions of Blender have a lot more point and click options however for now the more most important thing to know is to scroll with the mouse wheel, pan with the middle mouse button while holding shift, and rotate by just pressing the middle mouse button and dragging your mouse around. Lastly, selecting anything is done with the mouse right button and confirming is with the left mouse button. This is true in 95% of cases and I don't suggest changing that. If you don't have a middle mouse button, which is sometimes done by clicking the scroll wheel button down, there are workarounds I'll explain in another video, but I suggest you go out and buy at least a $10 mouse with a dedicated middle mouse button somewhere. I use a gaming mouse that has a middle mouse button on the very side for my thumb to press so that I don't have to move any fingers at all. This increases my workflow. One last thing, if you don't have a numpad on your keyboard, again there are workarounds, but I might suggest a new or separate keyboard with one. However, it's much less important than having a three button mouse. I again use a gaming keyboard with 16 hotkeys that are easily reachable with one hand so that I can press one button to do some command in Blender such as shear which is control alt shift s. Pretty complicated uh, command there and not easy to remember. So that's why I might have a hotkey for that, for example. So here in the center of Blender screen, we have a cube. A simple box, essentially. A cube is made up of six sides, as you may remember from school. Sides in Blenders are called faces. You can see up here faces. We have six faces, so six sides. A face is made up of any number of lines. In this case, four lines per face. And lines are made up of vertexes, or more commonly called verts. In this case, two verts per line. You can have tons of verts per line, but in this case we just have simply two verts per line. And your simplest line is going to be two verts connected together with a line in between. Thus, 
a line. You may remember again from school that vertexes, or again verts, are the very corner of objects. Verts are what you'll be working with and manipulating most in Blender to create your shapes and objects to make up a whole model. In the case of our cube here, as you can see at the top, it has eight verts and six bases. Tries are short for triangles, and this is calculated by taking your model and figuring out how many triangles it would take to replace all the sides with. This is done because some games will only use triangles, and the more triangles, the slower the game is. For now, tries don't matter. Right now, we have three objects in our scene. If we scroll out, we can see all three. We have our cube. We have our camera. The camera shows where you're rendering from. Pressing numpad zero will show you essentially what the camera sees and what your render will look like and see as well. You lastly have a light. This is just a simple spotlight for now to give our objects depth, realism, shading, and shadows. As you can see, the light is on the front side of the cube, I guess. So the back sides are going to be a little bit darker. If I had a floor, the light would also create another shadow from the box onto the floor from the cube. Let's go into edit mode to see what I'm talking about in a bit more detail. We're going to select our cube and go down here and select edit mode. So right now, by default, we're in vertex select mode. We have four vertexes on each face of our cube. Here are the vertexes, again, as you may remember from school, in the corners. So as I said, each line is made up of two or more vertexes. So I've now selected two vertexes, and you can see the line is highlighted. And if I select all four, it highlights all four lines, but it also highlights the face selected. So we now have four verts selected, four lines, and one face. Lines actually aren't called lines in Blender, they're called edges. So get used to calling lines edges. That will make things simple, and that's what Blender uses, so that's what we're gonna use. So now that I've selected four verts, four edges and one face you can see at the top that we have selected four out of eight vertices four out of twelve edges and one out of six faces again triangles don't matter for now memory just tells you how much memory or ram uh, your scene is using right now and cube just tells you what object you have selected right now I want to quickly bring to your attention in the bottom left hand corner here what's called the mini axis get used to the three axes and their colors and never change them because no one in their right mind would all 3d programs use the same colors for the axis blue is the Z axis which is up and down in 3D space. As you can see, we can move it up and down in 3D space along the blue line, which is the Z axis. Red is the X axis, which is left and right in 3D space. And lastly, green is the Y axis, which is forward and back in 3D space. Grind this into your brain compartments and decompartments until it is finally stored on the main blender shelf in your brain. I will continually reiterate this in my videos because it is, it is the most important aspect of 3D space and objects in my opinion. With three axes, we have 3D. With two axes, if we were to go into right perspective, we have 2D. For example, in right view, we only have the Z axis up and down and the Y axis left and right. So all we have is a 2D shape. Here, all we have is essentially a flat square. There is a cube behind it, but since we're in the right view, we only have two axes and thus we're only in 2D. And with only one axis, we would have a line or a dot. For example, if we select this line right here 
by selecting both vertexes, this line is in the y-axis only. Thus, it is only in one dimension, I guess. So it is a line. You can think of any object you want to model as being made up of basic shapes. For example, a simple tree would be made up of a cylinder for the trunk and a cone for the leaf and branches. Let me show you. First we'll delete the cube by pressing X, which is the delete key. And now, making sure we're in object mode, we're going to add a mesh cylinder. That is our tree trunk essentially. We can scale it in the Z direction up to give it more of a tree trunk kind of look. On top, we're going to add a cone. So we, go, we would go add mesh cone. We're going to scale it up with the S key a little bit and we're just going to move it up basically along the Z axis. And there you go. That is essentially our tree. If we go back in camera mode, you can see that would kind of look like a tree if we were to render it. Obviously, it gets a lot more complicated than this, but this is just a simple idea to show you that basic shapes make up your models in Blender. Now you can decide how to look at shapes and objects in 3D space and decide what shapes you're going to choose, make, or edit to create your model. If we go back into edit mode with our cone selected, you can see that it's simply made up again of vertexes, in this case 32 because a standard circle in Blender is made up of 32 vertexes. It has a vertex at the very top where everything terminates and it's made up of triangular shaped faces. For example, this one here. It also has lines. We have 32 lines going up and down in this instance, like I said, because the stock circle has 32 vertexes. And we have 32 more lines that create the border of the circle that is the base of our cone. If we hold down Alt and click on a line, it will select that line all the way around. So if I press Alt and click on one of the lines in the circle, it will select all the lines, and in this case, vertexes of the circle. So we have a circle, 32 triangular faces, and a single terminating vertex. Blender in stock form lets you create many basic shapes and with add-ons that come stock or that you download you can create all sorts of things. Let me show you some of the objects very quickly that you can make. Add a mesh plane which is essentially just a flat square face. Again our cube which is made up of six planes a circle, we just showed you our cone was made up of a circle on the bottom with 32 vertices. A UV sphere, which is a sphere. An icosphere, which is a sphere, but it's made up of a predetermined amount of flat faces instead of a UV sphere, which is made of curves. We have a cylinder, which we use for our tree trunk, which is just a circle that's extended or, as Blender calls it, extruded up a certain length. We have a cone, again, which we showed you, a circle with triangular faces all around that terminate in a single vertex. A torus, which is essentially just a donut shape. And lastly, just for fun, Suzanne the monkey. Suzanne the monkey is great for demos. So in conclusion, essentially any model can be created from the stock shapes in one way or another basically. I hope you learned something from today's video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. That's BlenderTech.com. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos about Blender and we also do Unity game creation, we do app design, we do programming in C Sharp and JavaScript and we also work with a ton of child programs 
that are used to work with Blender, Unity, and pro other programming tools. If you did not like the video, don't just hit the dislike button and leave. Please leave a comment as to why you disliked the video. This way, we can improve our videos in the future, and they will get better and better and more information and more informative, and that way they will appeal to more users and most importantly yourself. That's all for now, and we'll see you again from BlenderTech.com. Remember, create your way.